Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem leaf similar trees. So we're given the root of two binary trees and we want to know if they are leaf similar to each other, which really just means if you take every leaf node, which by the way, a leaf node in a tree is just a node that doesn't have any children. So of course, every tree has to have some leaf nodes because Otherwise, they would be like never ending. It'd be like infinite or something. So we take the sequence of leaf nodes in the first string. And when we say sequence, we mean from left to right. So six, seven, four, nine, eight. That's the sequence. And we do the same thing for the right subtree as well. Six, seven, four, nine, eight. And we want to know, are these two sequences equal to each other? In this case, they are, so we return true. If they're not, we return false. So the problem is pretty simple. Now, how exactly do we get these sequences? So given a tree, the main problem we have is how do we get the leaf sequence? Because if we can do that, then we can easily compare between the two trees and solve the problem. Well, when it comes to trees, how many ways do you even know to traverse a tree? There are variations, but the main two ways, breadth first search and depth first search. At first, you might think that breadth first search would work but it's actually more tricky than you might think. Let's quickly walk through it. BFS, otherwise known as level order traversal, basically goes through every level of the tree, which at first seems like it would work. We'd get these nodes, six, seven, four. And by the way, we would know that these are nodes that we're gonna add to the leaf similar sequence because these are the nodes that don't have any children. So we'd go uh, from left to right, left to right, and then here, left to right, add each of these because they don't have children, then get to two, it does have children, so don't add it. And then we'd get these two as well. So this is like the leaf sequence. We could do the same thing for the left tree. And this time though, we'd see, okay, add six to the leaf sequence, then get to two, then add nine and eight to the sequence. And then lastly, we'd add these two. So basically with breadth first search, we don't guarantee that all of the leaf nodes are on the same level. So the order gets kind of messed up if we try to process it that way. So this is how we kind of narrow it down. And we go with depth first search, which does work pretty easily. The idea here is pretty much the same. We're gonna start at the root of a tree, go left and then right. And every time with depth first search, we know we just keep going left until we can't go left anymore. So from here, we'd go down here. And this time we do the same thing. If we get to a leaf node, we'd add it to the result. So right now we'd have six, then we'd go back up to the parent. And then here we'd go down to seven, add seven, then go back up to the parent and now start doing the right side of the tree. So this way you can already kind of tell, we will guarantee that we will reach each of these leaf nodes from left to right with recursive depth first search. So now we go to one, then we go left to four, add four to the result, then go back up, we're at two, then go left, this is a leaf node, add it to the result, nine, then go back down right and add eight. We can do the same thing with this tree. I'll quickly do that. So here we go left, not a leaf node. Here we go left again, six, it's a leaf node. Go back up, go right, at two, down to seven, it's a leaf node, add it, go back up, two, now down to four, it's also a leaf node. And then we go all the way back up to the root and now we're at one, go left, add nine, and lastly go back up and add eight. So this way, it's okay if the leaf nodes are on different levels of the tree we can still get the outputs pretty easily. And once we have these, we can pretty much just compare these two arrays. If they are equal, we can return true. Otherwise we return false. Doing this type of traversal on each of these trees will require us visiting every node. Let's say the size of the first tree is N and the size of the second tree is M. We would take both of them together and add them up for the time complexity. For the space complexity, we will say the height of the first tree, let's say that's H1 and H2 is the height of the second tree because we will need that for the recursive call stack. But actually, now that I think of it, we will have to add each of the levels of each tree into an array if we want to do the comparison. So in the worst case, actually, the memory complexity also becomes n 
plus m, you might be wondering why is that? Well, the last level of a tree, if it's a complete binary tree, ends up being half the size of the entire tree, which this is a linear, so that's how I'm getting the same thing for the memory complexity. Now let's code it up. So I'm gonna first write our recursive DFS. We will pass in the root of a single node and we will pass in a second variable, which is going to be a array. And we're gonna be populating that array from within this function. So before we even implement DFS, let me just show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna have leaf one, leaf two. These are both gonna be empty arrays initially. Each of them is corresponding to one of the trees. And we will call DFS from root one and pass in leaf one, do the same thing for the second tree and pass in leaf two. And then at the end in Python, we can simply compare arrays like this. We can literally just do the equality operator. If they're both the same, we return true. If not, it'll be false. So now the only thing left to do is implement this DFS, which will populate each of these arrays. So first is the base case with trees. It's usually the same. If we have an empty tree, let's just return. Okay. The other case is also important to us. If we reach a leaf node, so if not root dot left and not root dot right. We also return because it's a leaf node. We don't need to go any further. But before we do that, let's add this node, the value of the node in particular to the array that's passed in. OK, otherwise what we do is just call DFS on the left subtree passing in leaf and call DFS on the right subtree also passing in leaf. This is the entire code. Let's run it to make sure that it works. Okay, unfortunately I made a dumb mistake and did not put the not in front of this. That's when the tree is actually empty. Otherwise we're always gonna be returning. Sorry about that, that's my bad. Now let's rerun this. As you can see on the left, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.